thank you all for coming out in this uh, heat wave. And uh, uh, just to let you know, I'm Connie Mason. I'm from Carter County, and I have worked for eight years with the National Park Service, 17 years as a folklorist historian for the North Carolina Maritime Museum, three years as Maritime Heritage Tourism Officer for the North Carolina Travel and Tourism, part-time employee of the North Carolina Division of Coastal Management, and assistant to my family's bookkeeping and accounting business, and a year children's librarian at Cherry Point Military Base, two years as a children's librarian for the Webb Library, and three years as the archivist for Corsair Waterfowl Museum. God, am I tired. <laughs> we don't care about any of that. You don't. Yeah, you're, you're, you're Rudolph. Yeah. I'm Rudolph Youngin, and that's, in, that's the important thing because Daddy was a storyteller. And Daddy was from Stacy, North Carolina. That's a good lead in, Karen. Uh, and, um, you know, as you get older, it's harder to give your parents gifts. And the more gifts you give them uh, later on in life, they give them back to you because <laughs> they're downsizing. And uh, so I interviewed my father and uh, got all this information and wrote a song called Stacy, My Daddy's Hometown. Now, this is the only song that I'm repeating from last time I was at Parlor Talk because... Uh, there were some people from Pennsylvania, the last thing I heard, and they were going to come today, and that was their favorite song. So they're not here, so I'm singing their favorite song. And um, <laughs> Stacy is located between Beaufort and Cedar Island. And um, it's small, but I don't like to say it's small. I like to say it's quaint, you know. And uh, it's in the area of down east Carter County. And, which is Highway 70 all the way down to Cedar Island from, uh, from North River. And um, uh, Daddy loved the song. I gave it to him for Christmas. Uh, and his true down east dry wit, he said, Connie, it takes you longer to sing the song than it does to go through Stacy at 35 miles an hour. <laughs> so there you go. Now, in the song, I do talk about the different communities down east. And to my shame and regret, I left a community out. Now, after I sing the song, if you can tell which one I left out, you get a free CD. Now, uh, that's all I can do to, to make up for my faux pas. But anyway, this is uh, Stacy, my daddy's hometown. Stacy doesn't have a Macy's, sidewalks or a stoplight, hope it never will. Oh, she's got what can be toured or bought, the finest folks that ever walked or set a sail. She's got Pittmans, Robinsons and Dixons, Hamiltons and Fulchers, and some Salters too. Oh, with Mason, Styron, Gaskell, Willis's, and for goodly measure, a ding batter or two. She's got Nelsons and a lot of Lewis's, finest kind of people, hope you get to know. Ah, and Stacy, pretty little Stacy, quiet, tiny Stacy, my daddy's hometown. Cross Mariah Creek, then right on to Horseshoe Street, eastward to Piney Pine, what a lovely sight. Oh, great day looking out at Brits Bay, smelling all salt spray, everything's all right. Oh, back around, going north to downtown, past the church in Bloodfield, and then through the swamp. Oh. You find Mason Town, Father's family sacred ground, looking over Core Sound, where it all began. And the people, the finest kind of people, greatest kind of people, I hope you get to know. In Stacy, pretty little Stacy, quiet, tiny Stacy, my daddy's hometown. Okay, now listen, here we go. This is the test. Down east, strung like little shining pearls, found it on marsh mud, hummocks, and white sand. Oh, each place pretty as old lace, fashioned by our maker, strong on no end hands. He made Atlantic, sea level, cedar, Island, hunting quarter straits, core banks, and Smyrna too. 
Oh, he made up way Betty Marshall Bird, Gloucester, Davis Shore, Williston, Harker's Island, too. Oh, and the people, the finest kind of people, greatest kind of people, hope you get to know. Ah, oh, like and Stacy, pretty little Stacy, quiet, tiny Stacy, my daddy's hometown. Stacy, my daddy's hometown. All right. <laughs> who, who did I leave out? Yes. Tusk. Did you know it too? What did you tell me last time? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you get a free CD. You, you can pick it up after the show. Okay. Great. Yeah, Tusk. And I've tried to get it in there, and I just, I haven't been successful at all. And, um, but I kind of like it, you know, because it makes, makes me uh, know that people are paying attention, or at least don't know the 13 communities of down east, and so they're, they're getting that. But uh, Karen, like Karen told you, um, Karen didn't introduce herself. She was Karen Willis Amspacker from Harker's Island, and is the director of the Corsound Waterfowl Museum. Give her a hand. Now, uh, Emma Rose Guthrie uh, was born in 1933 on Harker's Island. She was one of 14 children. She is affectionately called Emmer, or M, and she spent her days on the water fishing, clamming, and oystering with her father, Leslie Rose, who was a famous boat builder on Harker's Island. She was known to sell the flounder to the fish house in the morning after her father had caught them at night so he could go sleep after spending the night fishing. Uh, she sewed flour sacks for the, for the girls in the uh, family. She helped cook the family meals. She married Garland Guthrie in 1951, and her and her daughters all worked together in the scallop houses, which used to be so numerable on Harker's Island. Uh, Emmer is known for her poetry describing island life. She is the his historian for the Huggins Memorial Baptist Church on the island and was one of the first to be baptized there. Her love for God in Harker's Island has kept her, this 90-year-old energized more than most, more than me, and I'm not anywhere that old yet. Uh, she is Harker's Island royalty, and I was privileged to work with her on this song. Now, you know, it's, it's like she said, she, uh, she busted the plate, her upper plate, and could not be here today because uh, I'm sure talking was hard, and you're not going to have... Emma up here without her talking and saying something. So, um, uh, and then, you know, this poem is, is called Our Song, The Lighthouse. Now, uh, this is the seventh final version because, you know, because the, the chorus is totally hers and the fourth verse is totally hers. But we had to, to uh, adapt it to the tune, the other verses, and they all say what she wanted to say but just, you know, we rearranged some things. And, and uh, so anyway, uh, she was very happy with this, and I'm glad. And uh, she said, don't sing this song without your white hat on. So I, I, have, I have done my duty. And so I hope you like this. This is the premiere of this song. Nobody else has heard this song. So y'all are special, okay? Our old lighthouse stands so tall, watching over us one and all. It's been standing amid a host of stars and is a dear, dear friend of ours, and is a dear, dear friend of ours. God gave our light with all of her grace. No other light can take her place. Soul safe from death in darkest nights. When they 
beheld her bold bright light. Our old lighthouse stands so tall, watching over us one and all. It's been standing amid a host of stars and is a dear, dear friend of ours and is a dear, dear friend of ours. We climbed her steps when we were younger but as we aged those days were numbered our loved ones helped and guided our helm to view our beloved and most treasured realm our old lighthouse stands so tall watching over us one and all it's been standing amid a host of stars and is a dear dear friend of ours and is a dear dear friend of ours surveying the waters love the blue sea so many memories come back to me i see all my friends as we were then with grateful tears wiped away by the wind Stand so tall, watching over us, one and all. It's been standing amid a host of stars, and is a dear, dear friend of ours, and is a dear, dear friend of ours. Hear that old light we would play ball all summer long until late in the fall our skin was bronzed by long hours in the sun oh but we didn't care we had so much fun Our old lighthouse stands so tall, watching over us one and all. It's been standing amid a host of stars and is a dear, dear friend of ours and is a dear, dear friend of ours. She'll continue to stand there by the sea. A banker's pride for all folks to see. Those lovely diamonds of black and of white. Thanking our God for this beautiful life. Our old lighthouse, she stands so tall, watching over us one and all. She's been standing amid a host of stars, and she's a dear, dear friend of ours, and she's a dear.
Miss Emma Rose Guthrie. See, they liked it. So you had nothing to be afraid of. I'm talking to the camera now. Because um, <laughs> she's going to see this. Now, this portion of my program is uh, the mollusca uh, portion. Uh, and this is talking about all the, the mussels and the uh, shellfish, you know, in our area. And um, I found a, a song in Northwest, and it was written around 1874, and the lyrics are sung to the tune of, the, of Roz and the Bow, and it's titled Acres of Clams. So you know I had to change the words to make it fit here in, in Eastern North Carolina. Uh, because, you know, clams are, they are in the mollusca or mussel family and are an important part of our culture. In fact, clam kicking used to be a commercial way of harvesting clams, and that was invented on Harker's Island, okay? And the first clam dredge was designed by someone from Stacy, North Carolina, my daddy's own town. <laughs> and in fact, baby clams are called seed clams, and are transplanted by fishermen into plots of river bottom that they have rented from the state. And I actually have a clam farmer in my family. <laughs> she lives down the road from me, is on the Newport River, and her and her brother have a, a clam operation, Hammond Clamming. And, um, uh, and yes, and, and they do oysters too. So, you know, when you're looking for oysters, come, come call me and I'll, t I'll set you up. <laughs> I recently found a study showing the impact of human drugs on sea life, and I thought that this would be a great tip for clam farmers, such as yourself. Uh, you know how they take you know your, your old bottles of drugs and things, and they throw them in the in the uh, sewer, and they get into the sea, and uh, and they affect the, the the world around us. And they found uh, one of the drugs was the antidepressant Prozac. And it seems that clams start to reproduce like mad when giving high doses of Prozac. Thank you. So that proves that Prozac is effective as a muscle relaxant. It also, it also gives a new meaning to happy as a clam. Okay. Now, I have, um, who would like to be a, an easel for me? Paula, come up here. You would like to be an easel for me. Is that for you? Yep, that's for, that's for the audience. Now, this is the chorus to this, to this song. And so I'm going to sing it through. I'm going to sing the verse, the first verse, and the chorus one time. And then, then it'll be your turn to sing with me, okay? Okay. I've traveled all over this country, hitchhiked it, trotted and swam. Looked for my undersea heaven, surrounded by acres of clams. Surrounded by acres of clams. Surrounded by acres of clams. As I dream of my happy condition, surrounded by acres of clams. One more time. Surrounded by acres of clams. Surrounded by acres of clams. As I dream of my happy condition, surrounded by acres of clams. Very good. You're a good singer. So rolling my grub in my blanket, I left all my tools on the ground. I started one morning to shank it for the place they call Bogan Core Sound. Arriving flat broke in midwinter, I found the land shrouded in fog, all covered over with sand spurs as thick as the hair on a hog. So here we go. Surrounded by acres of clams. Surrounded by acres of clams. As I dream of that happy condition. Surrounded by acres of clams. I staked me a claim in the sand hills. 
I sat myself down to hard toil. For two years I waited and worked it, but only caught wooden decoys. <laughs> From the state I rent muddy bottom to seed my clam beds galore. Clam jumpers came, I shot at them. They won't be back anymore. Surrounded by acres of clams, surrounded by acres of clams. As a dream of my happy condition, surrounded by acres of clams. Very good. I can't get over how good you are. I tried to get out of the county, but poverty forced me to stay. I married a native down Easter. Now nothing can drive me away. Now that I've used to the climate, I think if a man ever found a place to live freely and happy, that Eden is Bogan Core Sound. Surrounded by acres of clams, surrounded by acres of clams. As I dream of my happy condition, surrounded by acres of clams. Very good. Give, give Paul a hand. It's dangerous to know somebody who's speaking, you know. Mm. Mm. Ah. ah, that's not some of that clear liquid from Harlow, is it? Moonshine. They make. Yeah, yeah. I'll start singing better. Now, this, uh, this is like I said. This is the mollusca part of my program. So, the other important shellfish in our community is oysters. You either love them or you hate them. There's no middle ground. And oysters are a big part of our food culture and traditions here. It's just not Thanksgiving, Christmas, or New Year's without an oyster roast. Am I right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, eating oysters requires a basic ignorance of uh, oyster anatomy. <laughs> Until you know different, uh, all you think it is is a hunk of meat. But let me tell you, those teachers you know, in our local schools want to make everything relevant. And so like, unlike every school child in America that dissected a frog, we dissected an oyster. <laughs> I learned what it ate and where it went afterwards, and I was not happy. <laughs> I could not eat my beloved oyster for a while, but you know, thank goodness I don't remember half the stuff I learned in high school. <laughs> so that turned out well. <laughs> But years later, when I was working for the Maritime Museum, my colleague, Jeannie Krauss, who is a botanist and, and a biologist, found this poem in Mollusca Magazine. Any subscribers here to Mollusca Magazine? <laughs> Did you know there was such a magazine? Well, let me tell you. So um, it reminded me of my experience in high school, and so I wanted to share it. But first, we, I want to do a little survey. How many here love or hate oysters? Hands. Well, there's one, two, there's three or four. That's, that's, that's okay. We, we love you still. <clears throat> How many here love oysters? Yeah, be proud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to be fried. <laughs> well, and my cousin here, they got to be fried so that they look like rubber bands, about like this, you know. And, uh, uh, but after the song is over, we're going to take another survey. And see, see, <laughs> see if you still feel the same after after this song. Okay, this is called the oyster. <clears throat> well, tonight I ate an oyster, an oyster in a stew, a stew of mud and butter that he was a floating through. Ate his heart, his liver, his gill and his fluid sac, his teeth and his capillaries. The two belong is back. Well, tonight I ate an oyster, an oyster in a stew, a stew of mud and butter that he was a floating through. 
Well, I ate his brain and ganglia, his nervous system central, his stomach, oh, and his contents, his muscles to the ventral. Well, tonight I ate an oyster, an oyster in a stew, stew of mud and butter that he was a-floating through. Oh, I ate his pores and fleshy foot, intestines, oh, large and small, other glands and tissues, well, I quite devoured all. Well, tonight I ate an oyster, an oyster in a stew, a stew of mud and butter that he was a-floating through. Oh, dear host, the meal was just perfect, a real delight to sup. But please show me the bathroom. My oyster's coming up. Well, tonight I ate an oyster, an oyster and a stew, a stew of mud and butter that he was a floating through. Bum bum bada bada bada. <gasps> <laughs> How many here still love oysters? Yay! <clears throat> I don't think I hurt the industry. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, uh, we had a boat builder from England that worked at the Maritime Museum. His name was uh, um, Jeff Schofield. <laughs> and um, mm, he, he uh, was an Englishman and he loved to stir the pot. You know what I mean? He loved to create controversy. And he had heard me sing this song, and he went to T&W Oyster Bar up Highway 24. You know where I'm talking about? <clears throat> and he was sitting there at the bar, and he said, uh, talk to the man shucking the oysters. He said, uh, have you heard Connie Mason's song? I had a little smile. He said, oh, yeah, we like that song. Well, Jeffrey was dumbfounded. He said, why? <laughs> <clears throat> that doesn't it hurt your business? <clears throat> he said, no. <clears throat> it's actually helped because now people had to buy more liquor before they drank. Before they <clears throat> <clears throat> so, there you go. <clears throat> uh, as I said, I uh, uh, have been a, a children's librarian a couple times, and, and I love children. And uh, uh, I wrote this song uh, to encourage children to spread their wings and and find out their place in the world. And um, <clears throat> I envision this song, uh, when I get it on CD sometime, with a children's choir that sings a, a, a verse, and then I sing back to them. It's kind of like a call and response. And then I sing, and then we all sing the last verse, okay? And uh, <clears throat> hope you like it. It's called Newborn Wings. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. You will never write a song unless you try to sing. You will never find yourself unless you try your wings. Flowers grow from seed with sunshine and some rain. If at first you don't succeed, you must try and try again. You will never write a song unless you try to sing. You will never find yourself unless you try your wings. So flap and spread your wings. Look up to the sky. You can do anything, be bold, like the dragonfly. And then the children will sing. We will try and write our songs and do our best to sing. We will seek to find ourselves and try our newborn wings. But catch us when we fall. Praise us when we're good. Help us climb big walls. Bring peace to our neighborhoods. Then I'll sing. 
You will try and write your songs and do your best to sing. You will seek to find yourselves and try your newborn wings and will catch you when you fall. Praise you when you're good. Help you climb big walls and bring peace to our neighborhood. And then we'll all sing. We will try and write our songs and do our best to sing. Ye will seek to find ourselves and try our newborn wings again. We will try and write our songs and do our best to sing. We will seek to find ourselves and try our newborn wings. Very good. Thank you. You've got a singing bunch. I need to take you with me everywhere I go. Um, and this section, this program was called Connie Mason and Friends. And even though I'm up here by myself, that doesn't mean I don't have any friends. <laughs> that means they couldn't come or they're dead. Um, <laughs> and unfortunately, Billie Jean Hewling, uh, she's deceased. She, she made it to uh, 2020, but she was 94. And she was a writer. And even though she wasn't from here, she loved the community. She loved the traditions. And she was a, a writer, and she worked at the community college. She went to First Baptist Church with me, and I knew her. And uh, she wrote uh, two books that I know of. One was poetry, and one was historical fiction. And she authored those two books. And The Lore and Lure of the Coastal Banks was her poetry book. And Beneath the Devil's Nose was her fiction book. And she gave me her poetry book and said, I want you to find a poem in here that you would like to set to music. And so I did. I, I picked the K Banker's Bench. Now, K is spelled C A apostrophe E. That's short for Cape. And there's a controversy about K Bankers, uh, but we're not going to get into that. That is not my program. Uh, you can ask somebody else about the K Bank. But um, uh, I picked this poem for its Down East food, Foodways traditions. <clears throat> it talks about salted mullet which was an important commercial product as well as a food source for the community, there was so much mullet sent out to other markets on this rail line that was right out here, right outside this door, from here to Goldsboro was called the mullet line. And I'm serious. And it was on the, it was on the sidecar. They said, this is the mullet line. And um, uh, you salted the mullet because there was no refrigeration at that time. And so salt fish, you know, uh, if it wasn't for salt fish, my uh, uh, cousin and, and dear friend Janice Smith said we would have starved to death during the Depression if it wasn't for salted spot and hogfish. And, um, uh, but when you um, salt a fish, you just don't put it in the frying pan without rinsing it, but then you have to dry it, okay? And... Um, to dry it, they would put it on the Merkel bushes outside, but you stood the danger of getting blowfly eggs or maggots in your fish, and you didn't want to do that. Now, when I uh, interviewed my father, uh, he told me about this apparatus that was like three stories tall pole that had an endless line that ran through it, like a flagpole. Okay, and then there was a plank with nails driven through it, and the ends of the nails the fish were pressed on it, and then the plank was raised up to the top of the pole above the fly line. I never knew there was a fly line. And so, you know, my dad was a great storyteller, so I thought, I was a little skeptical. But then I was, uh, after Daddy had died, um, there was a... a a meeting that I went to for oral historians and oral history people, interview people was there, and a man by Mr. Manson Meekins was there from Kinnikeet, from Avon, and, I, and uh, he wrote this. 
As a youngster in Avon, I remember seeing fish hangers, dryers, in family yards. The one I particularly remember was in the yard of Mr. Andrews Williams. Fish being a main staple and there being no refrigeration, it was necessary to use salt as a preservative. Small fish like spot and hogfish were a delicacy when split and salted for about 30 minutes and then washed and rinsed and hung to dry. To prevent blowflies from laying their eggs on the fish, it was best to hoist them out of reach. A fish pole was made for this purpose. The corned and dried fish were and are delicious fried, and of course the fish hangers are a thing of the past. Mr. Manson was born in 1916, and he drew a picture. And when I saw that picture, I almost cried. I said, Daddy, I won't doubt you again. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, and you can come look at that uh, closer later, but uh, uh, he was the only one that uh, told me about it. Now, in this song, there's also, uh, there's, he's talking about eating robins. You know, now you didn't, uh, you didn't take a shotgun and get a robin because there wouldn't be nothing left. <laughs> but they would take fishing net, you know, and, and throw it over the bushes, you know, and that's how you would catch the, the robins to eat. And then it talked about um, eating loons. Now, you are what you eat, and loons eat fish. And um, sometimes they're just, if you don't know how to fix them, they're a little bit strong. And uh, every, everybody down east, you know, loves them because they know how to fix them. But if you didn't, it was, it, it was an acquired taste. And uh, Josiah Bailey, who was one of the original fish house liars, told this story. And I think this goes to prove about how loons were an acquired taste. He loved the people down east and the whole society, and he was, he was great, and we all loved him. And um, he told about somebody had invited him to come have some loon stew, you know, out at the Cape, you know. They were sitting on the bow of the boat, you know, and he had a plate full of stew, and he took a couple bites. Well, uh, his guest had to turn around for something, and he gently put it in front of his dog to eat, and the dog ate it. Uh, but then Josiah said, well, then, you know, the dog licked his private parts, you know, to get the taste out of his mouth. <laughs> so <laughs> That can't can show you how bad it was. But anyway, this is the K Banker's Bench by Billie Jean Hewling. The K banker sits on his old banker's bench. It's weathered a soft gray by the salt laden air. His nets all are gathered around his bare feet. As his shuttle swiftly flies, so the mesh will meet. His dim eyes peer at a long distant past. When the fish were abundant along the K banks, he dreams of his youth of vigor and might, of man powered boats and whales in the bite. But he longs for salt mullet, for his robins and his loons. He's waiting alone for his daughter's call. Papa hard crabs and dumplings like Mama used to make, or oysters and clams he's taken by his rake. Oh, the days! He lives all alone. She left long ago to sleep in the graveyard under totems of conch. They hang from the branches of green live oak. There she rests forever among her own folk. But he longs for salt mullet, for his robins and his loons. He's waiting alone for his daughter's call. Papa hard crabs and dumplings like Mama used to make. Or oysters and clams, he's taken by his rake all oh, the days. 
He strokes the gray wood of the solid old bench. It's weathered by time like the banker himself. His roots all are buried so deep in the sand. He will never stray far from his bench on this strand. But he longs for some mullet for his robins and his loons. He's waiting alone for his daughter's call. Papa hard crabs and dumplings like Mama used to make, or oysters and clams he's taken by his rake all oh, the days. Oh, those golden days. <laughs> I know that chair is getting hard. This is the last song. <laughs> this song was written by Mr. Ed Conway. And he, uh, in 1938, he uh, was having, he went to school with Ann Gilligan, and she was Ann Gibbs later on in her life, Chalk and Gibbs of that fame, okay? She married well. <laughs> but uh, Ed, uh, was having to leave, you know, they all went to Charles S. Wallace School together, and he had to leave and go to that far most country of New Bern. <laughs> and uh, that was a long way in 1938, and he, was, he wanted to write something for his uh, a tribute to his hometown, which was Moorhead, and he wrote this song. Now, I did a oral history with Anne, and she sang me this song as part of that interview. And she remembered the words and the tune from 50 years ago. And it was, it's, it, it's a real good song. In fact, for the sesquicentennial, which DJ was ahead of our committee, and, and we did uh, a cookbook. A cookbook. Yeah, Rod Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. In the whole community. And, and it won an award. It won, y'all, this is true story. Um, we, Karen, of course, know so much about Sister, and I really admire what she had done and what Dr. Brown had done. And since it was the Sister Centennial, we wanted to have as much history, not, not as much, but our history in one whole city. And uh, so we did it for a company called Wimmer in Tennessee. And they said, well, number one, I don't do cookbooks. So, I got it because a friend of mine who does is a fabulous cook. She came up with my bag of and they say, I can't do it. I said, <laughs> we put this thing together in six weeks. We all have been carrying Tony and I at my house, sitting and singing and talking and whatever, along with all these other fabulous women that are named in the book. So I went to you want to enter it <laughs> in the Malcolm and Tabasco Constitution. They do a community cookbook. They have chefs from all over the country that go to Avery Island for the weekend and can do books. And I was like, really? <laughs> and so I didn't do it that year because I had taken a friend back and forth to South Park and some Big Hill. And I had seen the Virginia Beach stuff. And I was like, oh my God, I would just do it for real community. So I told her, I said, I wish I'd done it. She said, we can do it again. So we did it again. We got a call. Of course, it still gets me all choked up, and this has been 17 years. And um, she said, congratulations. I thought, well, we must have been one year. Is there anything you could really a big deal? And she said, you are the first place in Africa mm -hmm. to have the Tabasco National Home Cookbook, Community Cookbook Award. Chicago was second to Tampa. And it was what, Florida. Uh, something in Florida. Miami, I think, was third. Honorable mention was um, Pasadena, Houston, Cedar Rapids, and something else. Did I remember? And little old Moorhead City. <laughs> so we always called it the cookbook that could. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and well, this, this, is, this is a beautiful country song. And, and when we used to go around selling that book, you know, we would sing this song. And, uh, Ann Gibbs, in fact, uh, after I started singing it, she added a third verse. So the third verse is Ann's. 
Take me back to Moorhead Town. Moorhead Town, Moorhead Town. That's where I long to be. Nestled close by the sea. There's Atlantic Beach across the way. See the lights of Beaufort Bay or other seashores, I don't care. Moorhead, take me there. Long beach walks and quiet talks, sailboat rides on full moon tides, back to my home, no more to roam. Moorhead, take me there. Moorhead, take me Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and thanks to the, the Core Sound Waterfowl Museum for these lovely programs of parlor talks. And, and I, I hope they'll have me back at some point. I've got so many songs that I need to sing in public. So anyway, thank you, Karen. And thank everybody. They're anxious to stand up, I know. Yeah, that's okay. Just a reminder that you can buy either of those cookbooks downstairs. I mean, I just have to throw that in there, DJ. And I could not do any of it. We could not do it without Miss Olivia. That's right. We, if you don't sleep, you can do a whole lot more. <laughs> sure. And and we get, thank you all for coming. <laughs> and and we'll come back next week. The Harker's Island cookbook and uh, uh, a little piece of heaven's, little taste of heaven, little taste of heaven since 18. That's and right. Next week is Portsmouth Inquiry. So uh, that's next week, and then the week after that is, I can't remember. Oh, Joel Hancock is next week, and then the next week is the Coast Guard. So we've still got plenty more to go. So it's still about Thursday or Thursday. Thank you. Bring your pillow. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.